between pine-covered hills near Palestine is one of the best-kept secrets in East Texas. The Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility is a renowned balloon launch site involved in world-class scientific research. KLTV7's Joan Hallmark fills us in in tonight's Proud of East Texas. This massive 100,000-pound machine, nicknamed Tiny Tim, is a launch vehicle can launch balloons as big as the Houston Astrodome. Crew chief Victor Davison, an East Texas native, is one of only three people in the entire world who has the expertise to launch these balloons. Now this is the original. Who built it? Um, R.G. Letourneau out of Longview, Texas. Right here in East Texas. The data that we get, uh, the scientists get rather, uh, is, is used all around the globe. Davison has worked here at the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility 24 years. He was right out of the Air Force looking for a job when he heard about the facility. I remember one of the things they told me uh, in my exit briefing was to make sure I went up, uh, don't, don't go backward. And so when I saw this job in advertising the paper, it said National Scientific Balloon Facility, and I thought that was upward. And it has been upward. Originally established in Boulder, Colorado in 1961, the National Scientific Balloon Facility was moved to Palestine in 1963. It has recently been renamed the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility in honor of the Columbia crew and is under the sponsorship of NASA. When I first came to work here, it was uh, we were launching a lot of small balloons, uh, 11 million cubic foot balloons and 4 million cubic foot balloons. But as, we, as time progressed, we got to launching the bigger, bigger, heavier balloons that lift uh, 8,000 pounds. Now, Palestine is the staging area for balloon launches throughout the world, including Antarctica. A number of the facility's balloons are launched each year from that icy land with its 15 plus to 20 below temperatures. Ironically, it was Antarctica that first drew Tylerite Chris Field to his job as a payload engineer in satellite communications. What got my attention was it said you must be able to pass the exam to go to Antarctica and I thought that sounded really neat, so I decided to apply for this job and they ended up hiring me. Palestine is also the control center for launches at various other world sites, including Sweden, Australia, Canada, and India. We control the payload from here. We do all the commanding from here, and uh, we get all the data from here and pass that on to scientists. The balloons, made of material as thin as trash bags but bigger than football fields, are inflated with helium and launched on journeys to the edge of space. The data gathering and scientific experiments they carry out can be accomplished at a fraction of the cost of rockets and space shuttle launches. A lot of people think that uh, what we do has to do with uh, forecasting the weather. Weather forecasting, it's not, although weather monitoring for launches is part of the job. But what about sorting out the Big Bang Theory, detecting cosmic rays, measuring ozone layers, and hundreds of other scientific experiments that most of us don't understand? But what is accomplished by the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility may well affect our lives and those of our children as long as this planet spins. Until next time from Palestine, I'm Joan Hallmark. One of the primary purposes of the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility is education with PhDs in physics awarded there.